administration. Yusuf, let me begin with you. First of all, the breaking news that we've now received that uh, Congresswoman uh, Rashida Tlaib not going uh, to the occupied Palestinian territories to visit her grandmother. Tell us, first of all, the significance of her statement and what this reflects in terms of uh, ordinary realities for Palestinians. Yeah, thank you, Ayman. Uh, this is so important, and I think what what this really gives us is a window into the kind of daily humiliating and torturous decisions that Palestinians are forced to make every day that are imposed on them by Israeli policies pitting one piece of their humanity against another. And there are so many examples. You know, do I do I drop my pants at a military checkpoint if it means being able to make it to a hospital appointment that I need to get to? Do I accept a permit uh, to go visit my dying parent if it means that I can't go with my brother whose permit was denied? Uh, do I um, post what I really think about the situation on the ground on social media if it means never being able to see my family again? Uh, do I allow my five-year-old child to be taken away by Israeli soldiers if it means pushing back might leave him an orphan? So, These so are the how kinds Yusuf, of let me inhumane just... decisions that Palestinians are forced to wrestle with. And I think what's so important about this is that for the first time, Americans are getting to see a little bit of that reality through the prism of a congresswoman. And this is this is why I think the Israelis, to be honest with you, are so concerned about Rashida Tlaib, because she's forced, Congresswoman Tlaib has forced people to think about Palestinians as human beings for the first time in a space like Congress, where that very idea was taboo. So, Nayer, put this in perspective for us for a moment, because how unprecedented is it uh, to see an American president, as we've seen, siding with a foreign government, albeit an ally, to punish political mm -hmm. opponents of his here at home? It is not unusual for countries to deny access to members of Congress, but usually those are countries that don't want fact-finding missions to reveal the human rights abuses that they're committing, right? North Korea, Syria, those are places usually members of Congress have not been able to get into. Uh, but for the President of the United States to tell another democracy, not only just any democracy, the only democracy in the Middle East that we've known for 50 years, a strong ally, that they should deny his political opponents access is the part that's dangerous for national security and dangerous for our democracy writ large. It sends a signal that the President of the United States will not stand up for American citizens if he's not standing up for the people that they elected to do their job for them. And to that point, uh, Yusuf, the political uh, calculation here, uh, there's been widespread condemnation from both the Democratic Party and uh, some of the members of the Republican Party, even APEC breaking ranks with uh, the Prime Minister in Israel to condemn his decision not to allow those two members of Congress into Israel. But at the end of the day, this has been building up for some time. You believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that this has been enabled to some extent by the Democratic Party and they're now in a difficult position. Oh, this has absolutely been enabled by Democrats. Look, they've played along with this uh, GOP game of, um, you know, targeting and marginalizing uh, their, their own, including representatives uh, Tlaib and, and Omar uh, during the smear campaigns, which tried to take out of context things, things that they said to accuse them, and have responded to these attacks uh, from the right. And for all of that, for all of the cooperation with AIPAC, uh, they, they got thrown under the bus by the Israelis. Uh, and I, I think the Israelis think that they can do that because the, the Democrats have shown uh, on this issue that they're not willing to stand up. So the question is, how much longer are they going to put up with this, or are they going to start taking action to hold Israel accountable? I think it's it's way past due. And, and I think it's I think it's important to also make a distinction between Israeli people and public and culture and the current leadership. The same way we ask people to do uh, and recognize the difference between all of us in America and Donald Trump. Uh, this is not the first time that Bibi Netanyahu. He's a right wing leader. He plays on national sentiment, very similar to Donald Trump. It is not the first time he has sought to divide Democrats and have Democrats choose between wanting bilateral relationships with Israel and defending uh, democratic policy, right? He did this in coming directly to Congress and Barack Obama ignoring the White House and telling uh, the American Congress that they should do something against um, what was then deemed and voted to be America's national interest with the Iran nuclear deal. So Bibi is no holds barred. Uh, in my visits to Israel, I have found that people in Israel welcome debate. They value the fact that they are a democracy. So Donald Trump and Bibi effectively colluding to silence freedom of speech 
cannot be sitting well with folks who value democracy in the region. All right, Nayar, I'm going to ask you to stick around for us. Yusuf Munair, thank you very much for your insights as always. Now, even as President Trump publicly shrugs off concerns that...